everybody and welcome to our session today. So from my side, welcome again. Thank you so much for taking the time to join this tutorial for our TMS 3715 module teaching home languages in the FET. The purpose of this tutorial as mentioned in the meeting invite is assignment three guidelines part four. As you will recall the previous weeks we've done part one, two and three. Your lecturers for this module are myself, Dr. D. Saunders, and my colleague, Dr. S. Mukari, who has taken the time. Thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. Would you like to greet our students, Dr. Mukari, please? Thank you, Dr. Saunders, and good afternoon, students. It's such a pleasure to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you. We look so forward to supporting you in your studies and helping you succeed. We are here, both of us are here to assist you in any way that we can. Just as a recall, but I'm sure by now you know, we've mentioned this many times. It's also in tutorial letter 101. And on our module site, you are welcome to email us. My email address is esandard at unisa.ac.za and my colleague is mukhas at unisa.ac.za. We promise to respond or at least acknowledge your email within 24 hours. Just some general comments, which we've already discussed in our previous sessions, but just as a way of reminder, you should have all begun assignment three by now, as it is a written assignment and it requires in-depth insight. It's not an assignment that you're going to sit down half an hour before the due date, the time when the portal closes and begin. You have to spend time considering the questions and designing your own answers. Please read the questions carefully. I've said this each time. Don't just quickly read, find one word, for example, language skills, and then go off and write a whole three, four pages where it's not even related to the question. Answer the questions exactly as asked. Check the mark allocation. If a question is worth five marks, please don't waste your time spending three, four days writing six, seven pages. We're not going to mark that. If it's five marks, as a general rule of thumb, five points, which would be one mark per point and check your work for any typing and grammatical errors. We do have fantastic word processors, Microsoft Word, which does help us with our spelling and our grammar. Please, it doesn't look very academic when we mark your work if it is full of errors, which shows that you haven't even bothered to proofread it. So please read through your work, check, ask Microsoft Word to help you. And even if you are fortunate, ask a friend or a family member, please just assist me in proofreading my final work. Assignment three is due on the 10th of June. That's next Monday, it is really soon. That's why I have hoped and said that you hope you have begun to complete the assignment. You only have one chance to submit. Once you click that submit button, it is uploaded onto the assignment portal and it is then generated in the system and sent to us for marking. But of course, while you're busy with your questions, you can go back and forth 
as many times as you want, revise, check your answers, as long as that due date hasn't come, it hasn't expired, and that you haven't clicked on the submit button. We all know where to find it. It's on my UNISA, on the module site, underneath our welcome message. I did do a screenshot three weeks ago where I showed you where to find it. It is underneath the welcome message, underneath where you located assignment one and two, or even in the left-hand bar, you can access it. Either way is perfectly acceptable. Now, the main purpose of this tutorial, which is to discuss question two, I think only two parts today, which is based on our learning unit four, teaching, listening and speaking to home language learners in the FET. You need to study that, that learning unit in detail, which will assist you in answering the question. Question two, one, the first thing we note is that it's worth 25 marks. And it says, in weeks 15 and 16 of the grade 11 FET HL class, if you read your CAPS document, we go to weeks 15 and 16. That is exactly where you find the questions, where it says, that you are teaching the language skill of listening and speaking, and you have to decide, you've decided to ask your learners to listen to the following recording, climate change in South Africa. In your assignment questions, you will notice the actual text of this recording. I did not paste it here, it just not necessary, but let's focus on climate change in South Africa. And the question asks you, design a plan, a lesson plan for this listening lesson using the guidelines below. So you have those for your criteria. 10 criteria that you have to design, that you have to complete for your lesson. So in your listening lesson, all of these 10 things are going to be evident. The same thing for your lesson plan. When you plan it, we want to see all these things. As I said, don't just go off and see, okay, lesson objectives, finish the question. I've written two objectives, I'm done. There are many other criteria. Remember the theme? Climate change, grade 11, listening lesson. And for the two objectives, just some examples. These are my guides. You're welcome to adapt them, but we look forward to your own views. That learners will develop the language skill of listening in the HLFET class. Learners will be able to listen for just, listening for detail listening to make inferences about a specific topic, as in our case, climate change. If we read Learning Unit 4, you read your CAPS document, it has all these different types of listening, listening for just, for detail and inferences. You design your two objectives, maximum two marks, so obviously one mark per objective. Now the language materials or media. You might think, oh, this is simple, but you would not believe how many answers we get that have nothing to do with the language mater uh, material or media. So first thing that is clear is that we have the recording of the text, climate change in South Africa. And the second thing that we have is printed copies of the recording. So we want the actual recording. We may need printed copies. 
And if we really want to make our classrooms look nice, posters on climate change, flashcards displaying the relevant vocabulary. Remember, not all our learners may be familiar with the vocabulary, so that will benefit them. If you have flashcards on your board with the vocabulary and possibly the textbooks and writing books. Remember two marks? You only need to give two different ones. I've given you some ideas for quite a few. What do you think you will use in your listening lesson? The theory of language. Please take note of this. Many of us get confused when we speak about the theory of language. You could use any of the four language acquisition theories that are discussed, pages 34 to 35 of tutorial letter 501. For example, behaviorism, innatism, interactionism, and cultural sustaining pedagogy. These are found in our tutorial letter 501. Just think, which one? You may choose only one or if you feel two, but please justify your choice. In our tutorial letter, it also discusses in learning unit four about the process approach to listening. You're welcome to use that as a theory. And this might resonate mostly with your lesson, considering the fact that it discusses the pre, the while, and the post-listening activities, which we will get onto in a minute. The communicative approach. Let's read page 41 to 44 of tutorial letter 501, which refers to this approach, one of my favorites. And just think, why would you use this approach in your lesson. For example, learners need to understand the meaning and communicate a function of a language. That language is always or always should be seen as functional. Learners must be engaged in meaningful and authentic language use for learning to take place. And the role of the teacher changes to that of a facilitator. No more just standing in front of the class and just explaining exactly what has to be done in the lesson. The teacher is now the facilitator, the guide on the side. Now, the most important parts of your lesson are your different activities. Please don't confuse your pre, while, and post activities. They are very, very different. For your pre listening activities, there are different types of activities that you can use so that you can activate your learners' prior knowledge. You can use this by using the previous lesson activities that have been used in your previous listening lessons, or even in your other language lessons. Flashcards, very important. Predict the text, ask your learners to predict the text from the title. And again, your flashcards would also help to activate the new vocabulary. Please take note, that these are your pre-listening activities and it is worth three marks. So I'm sure you've already realized three marks. I should design three different activities. And remember these activities in your actual class, they might just be one minute. That's all. For example, when you reactivate your learner's background knowledge and referring to the previous lesson, it would probably just be a sentence or two reminding them of what has occurred in the previous lesson and how it relates 
to this particular lesson. Your wow listening activities. For me, in this lesson, the first step would be to play the recording of the text, to ask your learners questions relating to the recording, and then, as written in our tutorial, as explained in tutorial letting 501, listening for just, listening for detail, and listening for inferences. Post listening activities. The lesson doesn't just end after the while listening activities. Just always make sure to have some time for your post listening activities. And remember, these also do not have to take a lengthy time of your lesson. To reflect on the lesson and its content and how it can be used in real life situations. Analyzing the specific language used. Repeat parts of the lesson that you feel that the learners may have experienced certain challenges, or even ask the learners themselves to assist the other learners who are possibly need reinforcement and experiencing certain challenges. Checking and comparing the answers to your questions and pooling the information received and then presenting it in oral or written summaries. The learners love to work together and learn from each other. Now the conclusion of your lesson. This is only worth two marks, so two points. Wrapping up, please make sure you always have time for your conclusion. It's not very nice if a lesson just suddenly ends in a middle. Make sure that you at least have one minute to wrap up, tying up any loose ends, asking for any final comments or points that need to be clarified. Review the lesson, checking for anything that needs to be reinforced. And a hint on the activities to be completed in the next lesson so that every lesson links to the previous one, that it's not taught in isolation. Your learners will find it much more relevant and meaningful if they see how each lesson is linked and allow your learners to make any final comments they may have. That's the conclusion of your lesson. The summative assessment. Please make sure that you understand the difference between summative and formative assessment. Your summative assessments are things at the end of the course of learning. For example, an exam, a final portfolio, a written essay, a test, a class comprehension test, or a group project, one of my favorites. So this question asks you for the summative assessment. If, just as an example, we had asked for the formal, formative assessment, this would be more as a continuous assessment where you are assessing your learners as you go along, just seeing their discussions, their answers to the questions. You may assess that as you go along. But for this question, the summative. And the final point of this lesson plan asks you to identify three barriers that may hinder learning in this lesson and explain how you would minimize these. Please, this is for you to think about. In a listening lesson, what barriers, what challenges could be experienced. Just some ideas that we have many learners who are visual learners. For example, myself, I enjoy the visual much more than the auditory, and they do not respond to auditory clues. And what about those learners whose mother tongue is not English, and they are finding the words 
difficult to understand and the sentence construction difficult to comprehend. What could we do to help such learners? We could have the recording printed available for the learners to read themselves or on the board. We could have additional vocabulary exercises for those learners who are finding some of the vocabulary difficult. These are just two ideas. Now remember the two parts to this question. It says three barriers and how you would minimize them. So you can assume that you would get half a mark for the barrier and half a mark how to minimize them. And then obviously for three barriers that you are requested to design for this lesson. Please don't feel that what I have given you is what you have to use. On the contrary, it is your own ideas. You are unique teachers in your unique classrooms. How are you going to present your lesson? Let's discuss question 2.2. This is for 15 marks. And it asks, Use the above text climate change in South Africa and design, create five questions that encompass various levels of thinking for your learners to answer after listening to the text. You may employ Bloom's taxonomy, which I suggest as that is the one that we study in our tutorial letter 501 and on our lessons in the module site. But if you really prefer other theorists, you are welcome to use them. But I do believe it will be easier for you if you concentrate on Bloom's taxonomy. And please don't ignore that last sentence. You must indicate the level of thinking for each question. Let's go through this question and see some ideas of how we can answer. Firstly, the mark allocation. Five different questions. Maximum one mark per question. And the level of thinking. Maximum one mark per level. And the total is 15 marks. If we read page 59 to 60 of tutorial letter 501, there's a table that shows Bloom's taxonomy. It outlines the six levels of Bloom's taxonomy. Knowledge, comprehension, application, analysis, synthesis, and evaluation. As you've probably seen or realized, we go from the lower order to the higher. The lower being just knowledge generation and evaluation. Let's just look at an example of a question for knowledge. Simply define the term climate change or what is climate change. Remember your questions have to relate to the text, to the topic climate change. So if you had to say define the term listening, that is not acceptable because it's not related to your text. Comprehension. Explain what proactive measures can be taken to protect our world from the vagaries of climate change. An application. In your pairs, predict the future of our environments by basing your answers on the text. So although it's not directly related to the text, but the theme is evident. Analysis, compare climate change with natural disasters and global warming. So here we're asking our learners to draw up a comparison. And synthesis, in your pairs, plan your own unique ways to protect our world from the disastrous effect of climate change. And evaluation. In your pairs, as you can see, my favorite is always pair 
or group work where learners learn from each other. Determine if the negative effects of climate change mentioned in the text are valid and justified. So here they have to actually analyze the text and to see if they agree with it, if they feel it is valid and justified. <laughs>